Now, how we calculate this term, the posterior? Well, now we are going to use all the variation theory we saw before, right? We know that this is the formula for the posterior, applying the base rule. The posterior is going to be the likelihood times the prior divided by the marginal likelihood. And recall that at the end, all what we care is about the probability of getting heads in the next flip. All what we are doing here now with the posterior and all these intervals are just our internal calculations to make inference, right? Okay, let's start with the likelihood. Recall that the likelihood measures how the value of the parameters fits our data. In other words, our prior flips and we express it as the probability of the data given the model, or in this case, our model is theta, our parameter. And the data are n flips. So in other words, I want to calculate here the probability of having this history of flips. Some of them are heads, some of them are tails. So the idea is to calculate the probability of that combination of heads and tails. So imagine that we count n1 heads here, right? This is exactly a binomial distribution. This will be the probability of getting n1 successes in n flips. And this is exactly the binomial formulation with n1 instead of k, right? So if we rewrite that, we can realize that n minus n1 is the number of tails, okay? So we can rewrite that as n0. Having this expression for the likelihood, we realize that n1 and n0 are all we need to calculate the probability of the data given the parameter. Usually in statistics, these are called the sufficient statistics, meaning that if I want to calculate the probability of something that depends on the data, having the sufficient statistics make us independent on the data, meaning that I don't need to have every single flip. Here, I only need to know the number of heads and number of tails, and then the result of our distribution is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so we have calculated the likelihood. Now, what we need to do is to calculate the prior. And for the prior, we naturally are going to need a probability distribution. So now we will see that we will use the beta distribution. So why? The beta distribution is defined in this equation. And as you can see, it depends on two parameters and on this beta function, which is just a normalization constant. I want you to see the beta distribution as the distribution of our probability of heads. Recall that theta is the probability of getting heads is the coin probability. So the beta distribution is going to be the probability of that parameter theta, meaning it's going to tell us some sort of information in where is the most likely location of that parameter. That means, in other words, that this is a probability of another probability, which is theta. And that's why we call alpha one and alpha two hyperparameters instead of parameters. So I want you to think as alpha one and alpha two as just imaginary counts, meaning that alpha one is going to be a number that somehow reflects imaginary counts of head and alpha two as the imaginary counts for the output tells. And those values are going to naturally affect the probability of our coin parameter theta. And the beta function depends on the gamma function, as you can see, and the gamma function is a generalization of the factorial function. Details on these functions are not so important now, but I just want you to see how you calculate this. Considering that in our case, alpha is a positive integer, then we can use this factorial function to calculate the gamma, and then we immediately obtain beta, so we can have a normalization constant for the probability of theta, in our case, the beta distribution, right? Okay, let's try now to call the beta distribution to see how it looks uh, in Python. So we could define our parameters, alpha one, let's say five. So remember that this is like imaginary counts. We can use alpha two the same. And uh, we will take samples from the beta distribution so we can plot the histogram. So it'll be like numpy dot random dot beta and uh, we are going to use our alphas as parameters and let's say uh, 5,000 samples Let's 
let's use here a variable with the text we want to include. Let's call it beta text for now because here we will show the parameters in the plot, right? So this could be, let's say here alpha one and alpha two here. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, here we go. Um, so let's now add the plot of the distribution that we can take from SciPy. Let's do NumPy. Remember that the beta distribution is for the parameter theta, the probability of the coin, so it goes between zero and one. Okay, let's use 100 samples. Now we just need to plot the beta function that we imported from SciPy, right? Beta.pdf of t and now the parameters alpha 1 and alpha 2. So let's use a green line for this. And here the label is going to be our text that describes the distribution plus PDF. Okay, I think it is working, but we don't see it because the histogram is not normalized. So we need to tell here that it is going to be a density in the histogram. Let's try now. Now it works, you see. Okay, let's make this a bit prettier so we can add a next label for this. And we can write uh, the expression for theta. And we forgot to add the legend. So here we go. If something is not working in this part. How about now? Yes. Okay. So here you can see that this is the distribution for theta, the probability of getting heads. And in general, for a beta that has five and five parameters, meaning like the imaginary counts are the same for heads and tails, then we get a very centralized distribution in where the most likely value is 0 0.5. But you can see here, if we change the values of alpha, let's say that we assume 15 imaginary counts for alpha one, meaning that now a priori we believe that it's more likely to have heads than tails. Let's see what happens now. And you can see that the distribution gets shifted to the right in where now the most likely theta is around 0.8 now. On the other side, if we use, for example, 20 and uh, 10 for alpha one, let's see what happens. We get this. Now it is more likely to have a theta around 0 0.3. So you can see that with the hyperparameters, we can control the distribution of, of theta. And in that way, we can control how much the prior is influencing the likelihood. And we will see that soon.